think the name of his student may be wrong. Thanks for catching I think it's this. Elena. But I, I meant to check because I could look it up in the. I was guessing. I could look it up in the directory and I just forgot. But I know Riddell is R I E E L L. And then at the end of that, page three, where it said preservation awards planning, it seemed like the last sentence of that paragraph about the fountain maybe should be <coughs> down with the state hospital project updates and discussion. Oh, yeah, definitely. That should be so that, that sentence should get moved okay. down there. Yeah. Yeah. That should be. Mm -hmm. That was it. Oh, I'm sorry, one other thing. I guess I had too much time on my hands. Right, you actually read these carefully. On the November 25th meeting, minutes, under St. John's Episcopal Church, it's talking about what Bruce is saying, Mr. Krudisky is saying, mm. and the last sentence says, adding onto the rear stairs if appropriate matters were used. And I think it's just adding onto the rear if appropriate materials were used seems like the most appropriate. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah, that's just take out the word stairs. Otherwise, okay. Uh, motion to approve the minutes. So, so minute. Second. Okay. Opposed. Motion to carry it. Okay. Let's get on to something. Uh, wonderful. Well, the preservation of uh, the the, the paragraph uh, grandstands. You want to join us? I'll get the table. Sure. Go to talk. Well, I'm not quite sure. Um, I brought a little handout that I, about the grandstands. I don't know. Um, uh, how many people in the community have so I think I have enough. I think I have enough. I think I have enough. So the, the gray stands was included in the inventory of historic structures that was done in Northampton. I think it's like number 907 or something like that. I can't remember the exact number, but it's listed on there. And um, so as near as we can tell, the grandstands, the center part of the grandstands was, was put together in 1856 when the fairgrounds was uh, moved from Main Street to North Street, uh, which is the industrial park. And then uh, in 1901, the Fairgrounds bought where we cur our current location, and they moved these grandstands as it existed then over to uh, where it's currently located, and then they added on to it uh, over the years. So when you say Main Street, where was it on Main Street originally? Uh, it was uh, Warner's Tavern, which I understand was Warner's Tavern was um, like up where the railroad tracks are now, kind of. It was in the center of town. It was like hell right. It was like across from uh, Wiggins, the hotel, Northampton, uh, across the street would have been like Warner's Tavern, and that was the f that was where the fair was held for years. It was right in the center of town. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, because I read some research the with about the driving rain and, and uh, sort of that led me into sort of the early uses of the. Uh, Brands had with the with the uh, all of the baseball teams, the early baseball teams that Northampton had, and it. I wasn't sure that it was. I mean, the the uh, are you sure there used to be the grandstand itself used to be that close to the center of town? No, the grandstand it wasn't. No, no. Uh, okay, the grandstand was. It, well, the the grandstand was uh, when it was in, on, in where the industrial park is. Well, that was where it was put up in 1856. Oh, between the, then and between the beginning of the fair in 1818 and 1856, it was held in the center of town. Then when they bought the original fairgrounds, which was where the industrial park is now off of North Street, that's where they put the grandstand up. So when they were doing, when it was in the middle of town, they weren't doing racing there. It was a fair. It that, no, it was just a fair, an animal show, and they used to go down yeah. to the meadows and do the plowing matches back then. Yeah, yeah. the plowing races, yeah. yeah. Okay. But that was a pretty, the fair was a pretty big deal back then, mm -hmm. even for the center, you know, for all the, mm -hmm. they had vegetable exhibits and all the kind of stuff yeah. that they have now, just, mm -hmm. they used to do it in tents and stuff. I was just trying to picture huh. a, a track yeah. in the middle of town. No, it wasn't, <laughs> uh, track, the track was up in the <laughs> industrial <laughs> park, isn't it? That makes sense, it's flat So it's been used for, uh, you know, as, as it was usually, it's always been used to view either horse races, either in the back of the old days, uh, matches. And uh, then they 
had the sulky racing, and then they went to paramutual, and then paramutual thoroughbred racing in uh, 1943. And uh, that lasted to 2006, and, uh, um, and now it's, it's just used for the fair. And uh, it's getting more use now. We've put a new, the ring that's in front of the grandstand uh, is a show ring. It's been used by the Morgans for years. That's all the, all the booths are around it, if you've ever seen that. And we put new footing in there uh, uh, three years ago, a special horse footing. So now we have other horse shows coming. Uh, we want to show in front of the grandstands and stuff. So we're using more use. Uh, so we'll be using more frequently during the year, we hope. I know from, if I can just uh, facilitate this, I know from discussions around this table that the Historical Commission appreciates the historical value and uniqueness of the grandstand. Um, the, um, it's a, it's a sort of a vernacular building. I mean, it's, it's a small county fair that had grandstands across America, more, especially in the Northeast, and it looked like this, and they're a very special thing. I mean, you had to look at the sort of the highest form of that art, it's probably Saratoga, but uh, um, this is a, it's a lovely building. Mm -hmm. But, um, so we would be very interested in helping, talk, well, I'm talking with you about what you would like to do to preserve it and if there's any recommendations we can give in that regard. Well, here's our, our, our problem, I guess, in part, is that you know, we want to maintain the outer structure of the, of the grandstand, the way it appears with the curved roof and the, and the uh, yeah. racing yeah. thing there's at the top. picture at the end. Yeah. The picture. But the inside, the seats, uh, we'd like to change so that uh, we can put more modern seating in that's uh, got the right size aisles and the seats are the right size. There's plenty of room in there that can maintain the capacity from what we've been told that um, we need new aisles. Uh, the pitch is about right, um, but it, you know, there's, it's just a lot of, we can take the, uh, the inside seating out and replace it with more modern seating and not really affect the structure too bad, too much, I understand, but that's why we wouldn't be applied for the uh, community preservation uh, grant was to uh, see if we could do that. You know, could, it, could it change, take the weight, uh, can we, if we take the seating out, how, what does that do to the overall structure? Um, it's pretty uh, sound underneath. We've had the engineers look at it because we put a couple thousand people in it for the fair. And so when you get all those people in there, it kind of makes you really nervous. So. Yeah. Um, we would, uh, so we have a fairly kind of idea about its capacity. Uh, some of the timbers, there's a lot of the timbers that were originally sawed that are not grade stamped. So the engineers, when they look at them, they, you know, it takes a lot of time for them to, to do the engineering to make sure it's, it can bear the weight because it changes over time, I guess, too. Um, so that's what we want to do is we want to uh, hopefully keep it the outside appearance the same. The stuff, the junky stuff that's been added on the mm -hmm. back for racing, we'd like to take off and mm -hmm. uh, maybe just put an overhang on the back because the if, if, if you look at well, the side is picture, it the you mean this yeah, this yeah. picture right here, yeah. all the stuff that goes back here has been all tacked on. The canopies and stuff that they, uh, they all leak and it looks a little bit like an oriental bazaar it's really yeah, yeah i was like you know let's add this on the racing commission needs a place let's stick it over here you know yeah. and uh post and, yeah. we'd like to take that off now, and just, can, just put a single help, help us out with one thing here's, yeah. here's the conundrum our our mandate in the city is to is for preservation it's historical commission yeah and so there's a lot here that's old the envelope the building the, out, the outside the roof this, the, the, the roof line, the, the um, you know, even the, those, uh, those wonderful old uh, offices or, or, or the, the viewing booths up in the yeah, yeah, judging stands up judging there, stand yeah. up in the in the in the roof, wonderful stuff. Um, and I presume you want to preserve most of that. I mean, uh, I mean, our, our our interest would be in this preservation, not in, in taking it down and, and seeing modern grandstands put up. Um, what I'm wrestling with is what to do with with, the, with your interest in modernization of the you know, the seating arrangement because I'm not sure you, for us to support the seating arrangement change it would be sort of I mean almost I would say you don't ask us to do that because it's it's that's that's the historic nature of that grandstand yeah. uh, but. 
but we would be, but there's a lot more to preserve than that, right? I mean, it's, it's uh, first off, I mean, I've, I've been under the, those seats and they, uh, it's modern milled lumber for the first, for the bottom two thirds. The bottom two -thirds. Uh, two thirds is all treated lumber now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's in really solid condition. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. That, is, that is solid condition, but it doesn't, in other words, if you, um, when we have an event that's crowded, uh, because the way before when people were smaller, they'd sit in their seat and their feet would be in front of them and they'd break behind there would be another row oh, of people. Oh, it's very awkward. You bet. Now, now they kind of like one one person takes up two rows and sometimes yeah. they take up like five seats. So, um, <laughs> no, it's a very awkward yeah. uh, geometry. So um, we, we would like to replace it with seats that have like backs on it, which is a, a viewing it from the, looking up inside the grandstand would be a change from what it is now because now you just see these rows of seats. But when there's people on it, the view would be the same because you wouldn't be able to see the seats, but you see hopefully more people. But, uh, uh, they're really like bleachers now. Like they're really like bleachers. Yeah. They are bleachers and they're yeah. sort of awkwardly spaced. Uh, they're just a little bit, they're, 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 the depth is such that you, when you sit on them, there's really not enough space for the person behind you, but their feet behind you. And, um, um, uh, and so you can just lean on the other person's knees. Yeah, so, so it, yeah, I totally understand why you want to do this, by the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are very awkward for the yeah. space. And so what, what we're wrestling with is that's the historical basing. So we're not saying you can't do that. We're just saying we don't know what, I mean, I could say, how can we support that? Because if, yeah. if, it's like um, if we were to support changing the stairway in a colonial house that's, you know, that's uh, steep and windy, it's like, oh, that's what they built. Um, so, um, but, but maybe, you know, is there, is there some way that we can talk about other things that, you, I mean, well, you, could, you, could, you can change the interior, I mean, the, the, the seating area without necessarily our, our support, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so, as long as we're not taking it down, I mean, with, right. or altering the outside appearance of it, I mean. Yeah, I, I think one of the concerns is that with, uh, you know, really a modern use today of a historic structure, there are certain code requirements that you're going to have to meet with aisle widths and things like that, uh, that even if you, in effect, preserve the seating as it is right now, you're going to have to do stuff that's going to provide, you know, appropriate handrails and accessibility and all this kind of stuff. And so it occurs to me, and I think you made a very good point, when this is full of people, you're not going to see anything like that. It's not going to destroy the visual experience of the old fairgrounds. If you altered, you know, the the roof structure or something yeah. like that, yeah, that would make a huge difference. Or if you tried to toots it up with, you know, Churchill Downs steeples or something, well, that's you wouldn't like, want yeah, to do not, that. That's not the fair, yeah. Right, you know, you want to keep it the way it is. And I think that there are probably some subtle things that could be done. You know, for example, it's painted what gray now or something yeah, that's that whatever red, red yeah yeah whatever it is so if you put your new seating in it's painted the same color yeah the inside yeah the yeah inside so good. that it's not a jarring mm -hmm. contrast uh it, it wouldn't be like it was painted all white and then now you're going to put you know maroon seats in there or something so i, I don't think that we're, we're looking at a great visual change mm -hmm. Uh, to a historic district or to a historic structure here. And I think, you know, I'm interested in erring on the side of the quality of the experience uh, as part of the historical continuity of the city. And so, you know, that's, you know, where I put my emphasis. Yeah. Based on the question you were saying that you wanted to put facts, would it still be a bleacher with backs, or would it be individual seats? With backs? I, I I don't or, know. Or, or, that's what we want to figure out how so how, really, how the best way to do it. Yeah. Do. Because individual seats would look very different. Yeah. For right. Bed, right. Yeah. Bed, but you can put backs seat. on. You can, Wait, put, you can put a bench seat and still have a back. Yeah. <laughs> so um so if the on the agenda it says that um you're intending to submit a CPA application. Yes. Correct. 
So what would the scope of work be in that? What, what are you intending on applying for? For a designer, to hire a designer to work on this? Well, the, the, it would be, it's mostly, uh, it's, we have, it's, an, it's gonna be led by an architect. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to have an engine, uh, a structural engineer to do the, the stress load, the loading, and that sort of thing. And then we were going to uh, go out and look at, uh, you know, they would have the architect look at different, uh, like seating arrangements that we could get. There's commercial, you know, commercial ones you can more or less plug and play, or do you have to, we could create something different. But that was be the purpose of the study. Okay, so this is to apply. You're, that's my question: Is you're applying to have some kind of study done? This is we're applying to have a study done, not to do the work. Uh, so, it's smart way to do it. yeah, I think that it is, and I just, um... They may come back and say, you really shouldn't mess with this old building at all. You should probably take it down if you want to put 2,000 people in it, or, you know, 1,500. If you want to, if you want, you know, they might come back and say that. I mean, uh, I, I don't think they will because we've had it looked at so many, we put that many people in now and they say it's okay. You know? yeah. So here's the thing, I, um, I'm a landscape architect and a couple of years ago I worked on a two year study at the Saratoga Race Course. I'm very familiar with oh. the structures mm -hmm. okay. and I worked with a preservation architect on it who looked at the grandstand there in incredible detail. And um, so that would be one thing that I would, I would want to see is that you have an architect on this who really does understand um, the vernacular of the style of architecture and is sensitive to um, what the historic detail is on this, but that gets retained. Um, and then just a couple of <coughs> things to consider. I know that um, a lot of times, you know, Sar I know you mentioned Saratoga as being like a, a model. It's after you study the underbelly of that place, I don't see it that way so much, but it also has the slapped on additions. Like you would, that, that club house was actually in one piece and it was broken up into three sections and then there were um, pieces put in between the sections. So it's really a, a um, fractured a mishmash of architecture. Um, so one of the things that happened there, and I don't know if that's happened here too, is that the um, a lot of the you know, modern utilities that have to be put into these things, such as lighting and fire suppression, and now there's, you know, wireless technology, um, would be handled as well in a sensitive way, so that you don't, um, one thing, if you do go to Saratoga, you notice that that wasn't handled sensibly, so like the pipes are all exposed and there are wires hanging all over the place. And, so that would be something that we want to see um, be handled sensitively too. So um, I would really, you know, favor you trying to preserve this because these are pretty rare mm -hmm. there aren't that many of them around um, and a lot of the you know big thoroughbred tracks have just removed them they've taken them down we had uh, uh, when we did the redevelopment i don't have her name here what brown asked Simon. from the state yeah. Yeah. and she called and said you know they were working somebody else another grandstand and she wanted to know about our grandstand so i told her about it she said well We'd like you. We'd like to help you preserve it, and so we sent her a letter with the details and stuff. Huh. We never ran back. Huh? I don't know if she's still there or not. Or well, there's there. one in there's one in Br um, a Blanford, Middle Blanford Fair. Yeah. Blanford Mountain. Blanford Mountain. Yeah. 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 And then um, Ma uh, Marblehead has an old um, in, a, in the old baseball um, field there, the Brownie Grandstand, which we just put on the National Register actually. Mm -hmm. So. Your Great Barrington. Is the fair there? They got destroyed in the 20s. Did it? Yeah, and that, that was and it was rebuilt. Was it? That was that, that was in fact the part of the grandstand that ended up, ended up on our fairgrounds after the tornado. Yeah. This is some of the seats, uh, but the um, they then they put this modern grandstand up and it's just sitting there. Um, you know, it's a big glass thing with uh, all yeah, the so seats and stuff. People don't want to come to that when they're coming to a county fair that's been here for, you know, centuries. No, no. Um, yeah. And people who come, like, to the fair and go to the different events, even though they're different now, they're motorized and they're all this kind of stuff that we have, you know, so a concert or something. They still say, oh, I remember sitting here watching the races, you know. Yeah. And, uh, so, I, I, again, where I'm coming from is there's, there's a lot to preserve here. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I support preserving grandstands. The whole structure, and um, my comments to Sarah, when uh, or my colleagues on the on the CPC, when you came forward, was I'd love to see you have to be a bigger project and have the city have the CPC give you more money than you asked for originally. What what I was wrestling with was that the, what you were asking the money, for the money for was the least supportable aspect of, of the project in the sense, which was the the seating. Um, Putting modern seating on rebuilt 
bleachers. Whereas all, all of the rest of the envelope, the, the, the vertical structure, the roof, the, the judges' areas, the back side, all of those are, are very much, well, those are more original. In fact, I'm going to maybe go back to the original, the original building itself. And, um, and probably in need of, I mean, I know, we can see what terrible shape these are in. Um, uh, but the records and the roof need work and the understructure and the, I mean, there's a lot to it. Um, not that I would oppose redoing the, 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 the seating, but, um, because I don't oppose that, but that's the hardest to support for a community like us. I mean, it's just the plugging and seating. Well, it's, it's, it's new, yeah, it's new seating on, on recently rebuilt, uh, uh, um, bleachers and it's like okay well I wouldn't stand in the way of it ever I think if, 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 if you had the money for it I certainly would support uh, we wouldn't object to it well I think we were uh, we were looking at it in, in steps I mean we were going to uh, do the study to see how sound the structure was and what we could do could, could take having new seating put in it without destroying the structure uh, you know how do you go about doing that yeah. and uh, and then what else needs to be done there's a lot of um, trim work uh, that they hacked together that should be maybe restored to some better uh, 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 if you look at the, the one picture that has the front where you see the front's really interior, bad the interior side, catwalk and, and uh, the catwalks the, and stuff and that room back upstairs has been butchered up yeah we'd, we'd like to restore the inside of the judges stand the, and so the windows uh, are usable and that sort of thing yeah, yeah. yeah. that would all be part of it yeah. Yeah. The, the money wouldn't be there to do that but, but the money would be there to see how much it's going to cost right. and what has to be done that's the, the yeah. key yeah. thing is to uh, you know, take an initial lump of money to hire the kinds of professional guidance yeah. that you need to do what it is that I think we're interested in. Yeah. And I, I think, think uh, right as Martha is saying, if you get a good architect who's experienced with that, yeah. he will understand, he or she will understand the issues and be able to say, well, now here's a way to do that. Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? So I think that I would be very much supportive of, you know, getting an initial grant to pull together the design team uh, to come back and say, this is what needs to be done, this is what should be done, this is what we can do. Um, so I, I think as a first step, yeah. this is wonderful. Yeah. I, I, th I think uh, uh, Q and Riddle helped us put together the, yeah. the, the application. They had money in there for a, um, you know, uh, somebody who's a, a, historic, a historian mm -hmm. to uh, help us with that part of it. Um, Perfect. And, they also, you know, there's money in there for engineer for the uh, site engineers to look at, um, uh, you know, anything we take down, we have to put in the compensatory storage bank. Yeah. You know how, you know, we have to measure all that stuff. Yeah. And then, and then we, when they did the uh, put the three new barns to the fairgrounds, uh, one of the some of the electric utilities were relocated into the back of the grandstands. You can't see them; they're underneath. Oh, that's good. You know, they're they're out of the way. They're in. So they're the sparks. Yeah, underneath. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, <laughs> and and uh, so they, you know, that was, uh, and then they're they're piped out and they're going to the ground over the new barns. Uh, but uh, so you know, that's that's something we. So you have all the stuff you just did. It's in there, and, and uh, that was one thing we said you can't. They wanted to put on the outside of the building. We said no, no, no. You can't go on the outside. I guess they go inside. <laughs> One of these rooms in here, and then it has to be above 125, which is the flood plain. Oh. And so, they, you know, we have a spot where they can put that. So, there's two big, big boxes there to distribute power. So, well, I like what Bruce said. Uh, I mean, I think, I think there, there's a lot of work that needs to be done on this, and I support the collaboration. I all the support it. Yeah, and I think it's not a person here, but yeah. right. And, and I absolutely am. You know, would insist that you have a preservationist, preservation architecture, architectural historian on the team who can look at this building and take this apart and figure out. Um, you know, one of the things that was great about the person that I worked with is she went in and she could look at this building and take it apart and tell you what parts of it were original to the first grandstand and which were added, you know, 20 years later. And then when they, so um, that's always a really, really important information to have as you're going about preserving it. So. <laughs> and I'm just curious what the amount of the of this study grant is what the amount of your application We asked for fifty thousand. Hmm. Which is yeah. right. We think that would you yeah. know cover. Yeah. Hopefully they can do it for less, but hmm. so would our recommendation be because I want to sort of 
sort of give you something that's concrete. Our recommend, would our recommendation be that we would support the fairgrounds application to the CPC for a comprehensive preservation architectural study? Yes. How would you put it? Something like that? Comprehensive. How would you put it? Yeah, I, I think that, that would be on? it. That you know, to support the fairgrounds in um, the the initial research and design on this so that in effect they can come back at a later date and say here's what we need. The preservation of the entire building. Right, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really a, a preservation and continued use. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not adapting it to a different use. You're not going to make a big hot dog stand out of it or something. But just to encourage the continued use. And I think that's well, the there's some lovely breakfast servants here too. I hear you. <laughs> so would part of it be taking off those additions that have been put on the back and trying to relocate them elsewhere on site? It would just go okay. uh, away. So they're not facilities that you need for No, no, we have the, we use them. We, the uh, overhang on the back, we'd want to put the back up to some degree so that we, because we store stuff under there. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the Morgan Horse Show, we put um, like uh, 80 stalls under there, temporary mm -hmm. stalls. And we'd like to be able to keep the build ability to do that but the rest of the th stuff that was added in the back the, uh, the racing commission office and computer rooms it was all it's all this it's got a fortune and wire in it but it's not really it doesn't do anything it just sits there and those vehicles that are the work vehicles that are under there now that is, are there other buildings elsewhere in the fairground for those or? well now we have new barns we have places to put them yeah good okay. Those are great old images, though. Well, sound, so would someone like to propose, make a motion that we support a CPA um, uh, a proposed grant that would survey and, and, and well, you know, that, that would be provide the make this motion from your words. Okay, it, it would be to provide funding for the uh, you know initial architectural and preservation consulting work uh, to develop a um, an appropriate restoration and reuse plan. Yeah. I think simply that would be the kind of language. Okay. And it would also be to find that the grandstand is an important historic right. yeah. structure, which makes yeah. it eligible. Right, because we have to say it's eligible. Yeah. Is, is it listed on the National Register? No. No, it's only in the neck. Okay. It's not national. So, it's so, so moved. Yeah. They just so yeah, often. Okay, is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor of the motion that Bruce proposed to say aye. Aye. Yeah. Opposed? Unanimous. We support that. So, uh, we, we would support. Yeah. If you, if you develop a proposal along those lines, then we will support that proposal before the CPA. Okay. Is that fair? Yep. Okay. Good. I just wanted to also just wanted to suggest to you too, when we were talking about the um, the list the listing of it. Um, uh, you may want to try to at least get this officially designated as eligible for listing on the mm -hmm. National Register. Because what that would do is that when you go to actually do the construction on this, you could apply for state funds to do the construction. Okay. Uh, through the Mass Historical Commission. We're going to be talking about that. Do you get funds or is this a tax credit? No, funding. You're a non-profit. We're a non-profit. Yeah, right. you're a non-profit. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, I think Unless that would be really worried. And it would also keep, uh, <laughs> yeah. keep the state and feds member doing anything to the fairgrounds, depending on that nice flat area, like running a highway through there or something like that. Yeah. And that, so I would, what I would recommend, again, yeah. this is yeah. No, I'm just saying it has, yeah, it has a preservation quality to it. I'm sorry. Um, that that might be also part of the scope of work for your consultants to um, initiate that determination. So it's basically a letter that would go to the state. And determination of eligibility. I eligibility. Think yeah, it is. The There's a whole for format to doing that, but a preservation consultant will know how yeah. to do that. That's their bread and butter. Sure. Do we need a or Mark, Do we need a vote to? Uh, in that, in that regard, or is that just simply a so procedure? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you for your You're the, welcome. Wonderful. Good luck. We're we so yeah. glad you're doing this. Let's keep talking about it. We really yeah. support the, the restoration of the entire building. Yeah. And I, a good, thank you for doing it. Well, but yeah, I, um, I was uh, 
like this, old buildings and houses and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was one of the founding members of the first uh, historic district in uh, for small towns in Pennsylvania. Yeah. In Carversville, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's great. Okay, so I think I'll make the changes to our thing. And I'll well, the dollars. I'll give you a letter to Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next on my agenda is this section uh, 106 review from the Public Service Tower 150 Main Street, aka Coin Marketplace. So we were talking before you got here, wondering why this didn't go to the. Central, Central business area. It will. It has to. I don't know if they knew that, and they were just getting the section one of six ball rolling first. But oh, we, oh okay. so that's an addition. Do they? Is, is this a jurisdictional right? mistake on their part? They think that we do a jurisdiction over this, and we don't. We do for section one of six yeah. reviews. Okay. And this is being federally funded. Is that? They need an FCC permit. <clears throat> yeah, but it's funded or licensed. So, uh, what I would say on that is the, these drawings are inadequate for central business to take a look at. Yes, definitely. definitely. Actually, the first thing we got was this. Yes. There's no pictures. We're doing and it. Basically, <laughs> just tell we'll them what we need. <laughs> what we need is some idea of what the darn thing's going to look like. Yeah. So I we're talking about a nice it, There needs to be a photographs. simulation of this from several different angles. Verizon's making enough money they can pay for it. Yeah, and they can look at page 38 of the guidelines. Well, it's, uh, that's central business is that's different than, business. than second. No, but we're not doing central business. No, we're, we're not doing, doing it. it. But when, if we bounce this back and say to the applicant, you're going to have to go before central business. That's their issue to deal with. They can talk. Right. I mean, but I would think that a good staff person would alert the other staff person. Oh, I did. To, oh, yes, okay. absolutely. So. So, so what did Sarah say, William? I think that we need to have, uh, it's Carolyn. in order to Carolyn. properly review this, we really need to see some visual. Um, and I, I think that this is really going to be most visible when you're approaching it, especially from, um, like, and we got the Hall. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're going to see that. And also, I'm not, is the parking garage higher than Thorns? About the same height. Is it? Yeah. yeah. So if you're on the, the upper deck, there's something that connects them. And they uh, you won't. Them if you're on the first. deck, if you're on the deck, you're lower than than the top. But it's it's that vista, that classic vista coming down from right. from the college where I think you would definitely yeah. stand. Mm -hmm. There's so many better places in town for some kind of antenna or a tower that are that are higher than this, that that already have cell apparatus on them. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they want to go there. Well, these are cheap, aren't they? Just well, it must be just little roof-mounted things. So it's probably yeah. some kind of turf it's war with another about. carrier because they don't want to be on the same uh, pole with another carrier. Yeah, because probably yeah, they do run into that. Yeah. It's just so we would want to see the sight line. Yeah. Uh, from different perspectives, I, I would want to see photographs that with the uh, new structure imposed on it yeah. that would indicate to us. Uh, what the view is from the public right of way. Sarah, why don't you send them the, uh, the, the plans we received from their competitors on how to do the job right? Like on Ooh. the Episcopal Church and those. Well, I was going to say there's one right up the street. I don't That's know. right. <laughs> like, yeah, St. John's. Yeah. yeah. So the time is yeah. clicking on this one, but I could send them a letter saying that it seems very likely that this will impact. Um, a building of historic significance yeah, and we, yeah. we still need more information. Well, and also, what about the folks who live across the street and the upper floors of this building? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. They're, they're going to be they're going to be outraged um, unless there's some kind of thoughtful station. review here and asking yeah. questions. So I would say inadequate documentation. Yeah. Chris Catholic Church could decide the same here. Find a better purpose. And, uh, yeah, that would be a better location. Adorn it with all kinds of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use the money too. Sell to the woods. Well, in Hills Hills, they have it built into. Yeah, you know, yeah. 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 that's our last review. Yeah. 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 So it's a. Totally concealed. It's inside, yeah. 
Washington, Washington. No, the, the yeah. National Cathedral yeah. of Washington, yeah. SCA, oh. yeah. they do. Did they have to go through the review process too? Uh, CA, no. It's up in the towers. They, they should have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, Charlene, are you, despite our banter here, are you clear what we're looking at? Yeah, I'll just let them know that the Historic Commission determined that it will likely impact historic structures and view sheds, but we'd like some more information. It's not going anywhere. And we've known anybody since they haven't done. They haven't even anything. built the one they were promised to build over at the recycle center on Locust Street. That never right. got built. That's right. There was a there was a proposal which went nowhere for a tower yeah, well that back was a near the salt uh, tower tower salt barn to at the recycle well, center. Never got built. Yeah. They may have. I know there is one on city property on the Smithwick Forest land, which may have replaced that one. Okay. That was uh, your dating years, uh, probably about six years ago. Well, I've always been waiting for it. Never saw it get built. It was Verizon, too. Yeah, usually when they decide they need something, it goes up. <coughs> okay. Moving on, the next uh, item is uh, the one we've all been waiting for. Is that right. Nice? And that is the, the possible grant application to the Historical Commission for the Fountain Project. Right, okay, so we had a meeting a couple weeks ago that the uh, committee concerned the memorialization of the hospital. And um, uh, one of the issues that's come up is just funding for this. You know, we have money that's been awarded through CVA, and um, my initial research, our initial research on this is it's probably going to cost more to restore this fountain. So, and then of course we have the park, but we're just talking about the fountain right now. So one of the options that came across my desk was the um, Mass Historical Commission's Preservation Project Funds, which is um, has a yearly application. It's a matching grant, we already have matching funds, so funds are in place, which would be a requirement. Um, so I sent, we talked about it at the meeting, everyone was like, yeah, yeah, let's check it out. And I sent an email message to the um, program officer at Mass Historical and as you might suspect, he came back with a response that um, it's complicated <laughs> because the state hospital um, is not currently owned by the city, although this park will become city property as soon as the design is approved. So, you know, technically by the end of by July, you know, we the city will own the property. Mm -hmm. um, so that that kind of changes things. But uh, it's still the National Register status, I think, of the site is a little bit um, in question because so much of it has been demolished. So the integrity is really lacking. Uh, and also, the site is listed. It is still listed. Right. <laughs> Which is, and, you know, and I, I was having a conversation with Tom Riddell about this, and he said, well, you know, the state is the one that let this place go to pieces. That's and right. They, is famous they for tore the whole damn place down. Mm -hmm. So, you know. So anyway, just um, not to dwell on that because it does, it's not helpful. The, so where we are right now is if we want to think about doing this, and I, I've never been involved in an application of this type from the city. Um, I've prepared them for other communities, but not the city. I don't know if the city are pursues this kind of funding, if it's something they like to do. I, that's, we haven't recently, the, the Academy of Music has gone for this grant repeatedly, mm -hmm. and some other nonprofits, but I, okay. in recent memory, the city, the city hasn't. Yeah. What is it? What's the grant called? It's the Massachusetts Preservation Projects Fund, and PPF. And uh, I thought of it because I was involved last year um, with a project similar to this in the town of Brookfield. We restored the big um, arch and gates on the cemetery there, so it's kind of similar uh, trades. Um, so, so what they've asked is if we want to do this, we need to update their inventory, the inventory form for the fountain, which I did find. Um, it was done in 1981, and get a determination of whether they think that it still is really um, eligible, I guess is what I say. Because it's been removed and forlorn for 25 years? Well, not so much that. I think it's more just that um, it, the context has changed so much. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. the structure itself, we do have, we have the base, which is completely intact, and we have about half of the fountain which we're aiming to recreate. So um, it certainly is a preservation project. And there's certainly, I think, a left there to do it. Um, but they have to make the determination. How about adding in this? I don't know if you've ever heard of this. It's a, a company that will take historic photographs, 
and then blow them up to be almost a life-size rendition. And it's, it's imprinted onto lucite. It's mounted, crown mount, permanent affixed. And a photo of the fountain with some historic structure in the back, aligned just carefully enough so that the historic scene is recreated. This is done all over the country on rail trails. There's one like this in East Hampton, actually. And so this might provide the context for what is missing. Yeah. Well, I think that certainly in the current structure of the park, we're not going to recreate the context, but we're kind of above the feeling of that. So I think we're accomplishing that. But my, the reason I came for you with, I brought this, I asked David if we could talk about this tonight, is one, um, you know, is the commission in favor of us updating this? And I'll work with Tom on doing it and getting a determination. And then if that's the case, is the commission in favor of us going forward with an application? It's almost as, as if you're, you're following a path you have to go down. Yeah. Well, well, not you're so line. far along on this. I'd say go for it. So how much? Moved. How much? How much money are we talking about here? Well, I've gotten one estimate from a very highly qualified qualified founder who's done a lot of work like this, and they think um, to um, use the pieces that we have and to recreate the ones that we don't have, it's probably going to be about one hundred and thirty thousand. They wanted to rebuild the whole thing, which we're not going to do. It'd be more than that. But wow. So, but it's an it's a very important piece. You know, we found out that it was probably made by this British foundry. Um, we didn't think that originally. Mm -hmm. It's one. Of the Remember, your original estimate that you got was seventy five thousand. Yeah, but we weren't initially when we were estimating things. We were not talking about recreating any pieces. Like, say, if we have one oh. lion's yeah. head, recreating the other three. And you said this isn't talking about putting any other tiers on. It is. Oh, oh, so it, yeah. oh, so they were just recreating but using what the way it used to be. But using what we have, because we do have pieces of it. Right. Well, but I mean to do the dolphins yeah. and all that, too. Yeah, that's so it. There, were, there are other parts of the fountain that don't, we just don't have anymore. And the idea is to either get molds or somehow recreate those other tiers so the fountain is really the way it was originally. That's why it's so much more, because our initial estimates were just the base, the bowl, the, the first bowl. Okay. And so it's substantially more work than what you were bidding at. Right, it's definitely it's a yeah. considerably more work. But it would, I mean, it would be a world of difference. Yeah. Yeah, because I think we're talking about a, you know, a good, better, best scenario, and I think we should go for best. I agree. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, I think if we, this thing was just built in half and better with what we have, we, I think it would be a mistake. I think people would be very unhappy with it. This cost does not include plumbing to bring it. It does. Plumbing. It includes reinstallation. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it'll just Right. So that's a big difference too. Oh, well, that's we have huge. To well, we have to work out. Yeah. You know how we get right. water and how I mean, we do these recirculations. Yeah, but. But because right. I think from a public relations right. point of view, if you put up this fountain and you can't push the button to make it work, <laughs> the people are going to say, "Be cool," you know. Yeah. It's, it's really not too spectacular. As it sits there, just because so much has been removed from right. it, just to go. Yeah. What happened to all the pieces that are gone? People covered them, yeah. probably. The good news is, I mean, it was probably built with, I mean, like a lot of houses, mm -hmm. built with uh, catalog ordered parts. <laughs> yeah. you know? And it's also possible that you know, the top tier might have been damaged, and so it was just. It's cast iron, and so it's going yeah, to deteriorate. Yeah, there are two parts that are exactly the yeah. same as this one. One is in England. Yeah. Really? And one is in Argentina. Yeah. The exact same fountains. And I'm still working on trying to get this. You know, I'm doing an interlibrary loan, trying to get pictures of our fountain. How do you know that? Life. That's extraordinary. How do you know that? Well, uh, I'll tell you, we, I the internet is an amazing thing. It, it, it is. is. Do you remember the article that was in the paper about the parks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this guy, this foundry in, um, in Alabama has done a lot of uh, restoration ironwork around the country. Do you know them, the, the Robinson Foundry? They did the West Brooklyn Bell. Fountain, and they're, they're just very, very experienced in this kind of thing. They, they contacted Sarah, and Sarah sent, told them to call me, because they read it in the paper. There must be some like foundry 
newsletter or something. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Google, Google alert. alert. Yeah. Google yeah. Search. I search for my name every day yeah. out there, or That's special awards yeah. I'm involved in. <laughs> yeah, so they con yeah, I talked to them, and they said, well, send us some pictures of it, and blah, 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 and then they wrote back, and they said, I think this is, we think this is a Handyside fountain, and we don't think it, it was made by Andrew Handyside from Great Britain. Um, and so, you know, I did a little bit of looking, and Barbara did a little bit of looking, and then we found these two fountains. And they have exactly catalogs like, of where these things are. Uh, there were catalogs yeah. done. We're just having um, trouble oh. finding a copy of them or a photocopy. And then we also found through an internet search some piece, fountain pieces that right, were that had been the auctioned. exact pieces that were missing that had been auctioned. Well, <laughs> or some things are just Christie's or something. So we're so hoping they're not our yeah, pieces. We don't know. We have, we have no way of knowing what they were sure. Check with the British National Trust because they would maintain records just like we have our yeah. national yeah. register. Mm -hmm. It's called the British National Trust. Yeah. And so they would have records of all the different properties and they might have photo records. I mean, they, they're a helpful bunch of people. Well, the way we're approaching this now, just to update mm -hmm. you, is um, our decision at last meeting was to uh, uh, put out an initial request for proposals mm -hmm. for. Um, you know, metals conservators, um, such as this place in Alabama, or there are others around mm -hmm. closer by, to to basically do the design of this thing, mm -hmm. because we can only go so far not being qualified conservators. Mm -hmm. um, and say so they can decide whether they can, they can find out whether they can get, you know, these pieces, borrow them and have cast made of them, or purchase them, or whatever. And so that would be the first First yeah, when there's that group, Friends of Cast Iron Architecture. <laughs> Seriously, they were, they were big movers um, you know, when I was active 20 years ago, particularly with cast iron facades of buildings. Whole districts of towns had these cast iron. Yeah, right. And so they were very active. Yeah. Now, taking, taking your cue from uh, David, isn't there a way to I mean, there's a, there's a way of thinking in conservatorship where you don't try to actually literally replicate what was missing, mm -hmm. but you put something in that is obviously not the original, but sort of gives a flavor for what the design element was. Sure. So I mean, like, rehabilitation. Like using mm -hmm. sheet steel or, or something instead of mm -hmm. a, a more three-dimensional yeah. uh, cast piece or something like that. Is that the, the, the classic that is in the restoration of uh, Japanese pottery where they do their infill with gold so that you clearly so know what the new know. stuff is and what the old That's stuff is yeah. but that their treatment is a precious thing yeah so um, uh, yeah so that's a possibility I think um, it would know, be nice to see the whole thing were it would be brought back the way it I, was you know mass historical if they were decided to fund this we could they actually would fund this because they don't think we own it um, they Why is the issue of the park itself? It has sorry. to be owned by a, either a nonprofit or a municipality. But the firm itself is. We, we own the firm. What about the base? Well, they're not going to restore it. Well, the base is part of it, though. Why is it on city property? Well, anyway, I think we should just go through ahead and get this eligibility, Absolutely. and then. We'll just see what, you know, the application is due March 14th, so we have a couple months. And, and the form itself is pretty easy to fill out. Yeah, I've done it before. So. Help me out with one thing. I would, I'm delighted that you're considering doing this. Really? I mean, why, yeah. why, would well, why would we not? Take this on? In other words, yeah, I know it's, it's, it's so kind of you. It's so nice of you to do this. Well, it's important. Um, so, um, if, is your question really, should we let you? <laughs> well, I mean, it's wonderful that you're doing it. Well, typically, I had to bring it before the commission because I think in other communities I've worked in, um, you know, there may be competing projects. I wasn't sure whether yeah. there were other projects that were you wouldn't want to submit two applications from the same town. This is fantastic. Thank you. Or whether you know we had been funded so many times that this you know, state would never fund us again. Does anyone oppose Martha going, spending God knows how many hours filling this, <laughs> filling this, this huge of this is already done. proposal of out? Is anyone John, oppose John Martha doing this and would some, rather do it themselves? I see no I hear no one written so, <laughs> okay. we, we applaud, we uh, congratulate, well, we thank. The committee has to help me. 
Uh, okay. <laughs> I think the commission actually has to write a letter of support. We strongly support uh, your pursuit of the Massachusetts. Okay. Uh, That's if they determine eligible. Right. Yeah. And and we and we also uh, ask that uh, the planning department of Northampton assist you with clarifying to the city that this the the owner the the uh, provenance of, of that parcel. So that the state understands that it's it, it, it's, it, it is tough to though. We're having procurement issues with it too right because we, we don't really know the status of it. We don't own it. We will own it, but we don't own plan it. Has to improve. Right. In theory, once the site plan is approved, can we expedite this ownership? Huh? Then, then, then it will be ceded to us by now. But, but there's the still a catch 22 <laughs> element to it. Yeah. It's so stupid. So detailed <laughs> stuff. I would hate for that to be, I mean, because the application Well, it's not the state's best development, which yeah. is a quasi-state agency. I mean, we could state this as, um, we could just apply to have it uh, restored and not reinstalled. Do you know what I'm saying? Because Yeah, and then use the CPA funds to right. do the installation. Right. Yeah. Well, it's going to have to be restored off-site. It will be anyway. Well, it has yeah. to be anyway. I mean, it's off-site now. <laughs> it's off-site now. We'll just deal with the base later. Okay. And how close is How closely is the fountain in Argentina? How closely is it watched? Oh, it looks like it's been beautifully <laughs> preserved. It's I know <laughs> it does. It's um, I I, I, I know people who live in England though. So <laughs> that's that more, one is in really bad condition. Things happen. Yeah. 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 Oh, you're missing one of your lion's heads now. Oh, no, 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 have but at least, for instance, if somebody wanted to do cast, we, we do have a contact yeah, there. We do. We have to Are you going to put it in the exact location where it was? It is, yes. Going yeah, to but everything around it has changed. This is perfect. Yeah. Oh, we're You've got to happen, get that ghost were, image. Oh, we're definitely going to say, if oh, you were standing yeah. here looking at yes. the direction, this is what you would see. Well, right. I don't know how big it's going to be, but it's not going to be what you're imagining. It's going to be a picture of it. Absolutely. The park isn't that big. It doesn't yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. but the, you could have a 12-foot lucite panel there. Oh, it's not that expensive. It's not that expensive. Yeah, we have enough for that. That would be perfect. Right. It would. Anyway, thank you so much for letting me see something. And the committee formally expresses okay. its deepest thanks to you for pursuing oh, Well, I hope it's successful. I don't know. Thank you. I'm sure we're going to go run around. Next <laughs> item on the agenda is a review of staff issued permits. What, did, what have you done in our absence? Here? The only thing that I did, I haven't issued it yet, but we just got an, an, uh, an application that's clearly a certificate of non applicability for a complete one to one replacement of windows on Elm Street. So oh, good. Do you know where it is? Um, I, can, I can either go grab it or send it around. Oh, okay. it, was, just it was right on Elm Street. So. It looked like something that had already been replaced with care. Um, many years ago. How about our air conditioning unit? That's still the air conditioning unit out. has the building department has been in touch with the, the owner that it absolutely needs to come out. Okay. So I, I think he's dealing with them at this point. It hasn't even come out of stock. It has, it's still there. Yeah, it's still it there. It drove yet. past. Eyes open. Is there a time frame? Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Why not? It's really a little bit on something immediately. He's, yeah, they're a tough bunch to get in touch with. Our mail keeps getting returned. Really? <laughs> but Every time I see that guy in the wire, it goes the other way. But the building department is working really. Okay. For sure. And is that it? Mm -hmm. that that is that? Okay. Well, okay. Uh, next item is uh, pending uh, preservation restriction updates. So the preservation restriction for Round Hill is currently underway, but it looks like Florence Grammar, this is also going to need to be a local restriction and not a state restriction because it isn't the state is saying that it's not really eligible for a, a state historic preservation restriction which is fine and as the the historic commission will still sign on to it just as we went with the other one mm -hmm. so. um actually that reminds me that's one thing that would have to go along with this application is there would be a restriction put on the fountain the preservation restriction and we would need a letter from the city attorney saying that they intend to pursue that. Just as an aside. Okay. I'll, I'll give you the information. Yeah. The only challenge would be finding someone to hold it. What do you mean by that? 
Because you can't hold it. Yeah, we can't hold our own restrictions. So it would have to be a non-city entity. MHC would hold that. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. They hold that. That's fine. That's yeah. And that would have to be from the city attorney. It tells. Yeah, I'll I'll communicate with you about that. Yeah, because they have to. You know, just say basically we we agree to do this and okay. we'll pursue it and fund it. Any questions, uh, for Sarah, on that? Good. So why don't we do it about this time? Every month we do the, the mail back and look at what is. <laughs> Letters from our fans. Yeah. Uh, so this is a, we have a copy of a letter to Alex Geeslin from Mass Historic um, in response to his inquiry about National Register listing for the Clement Street Bridge. Oh, really? I thought that was already on the register. It is not. It's not? It's not. There's a sign on it? Clement Street Bridge? Yeah. Like said, it's not to the National Register. Maybe somebody just got a sign. Okay, so you just put one up. Oh. Huh. I could have sworn that was put on the National Register. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. So is this something that we officially need to support? Not at this point. Not until something goes forward. Okay. Uh, let's see. There we have a copy of a letter to Mass Historic from the Army Corps of Engineers saying that they, uh, that they agree with the scope of an archaeological survey that was conducted at the um, Kennedy River Boathouse site. Great at the work. Uh, Kennedy River Boathouse. And then a letter from Mass Historic to the Academy of Music saying that they agree with the replacement of the stage house roof and that it's consistent with their preservation restriction, which is good because it's leaky. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then a call for nominations for the 2014 Mass Historic Preservation. I think we sort of bantered about nominating something last year and did. I don't know if we want to put anything forward this year. Do you remember what we talked about last year? Do you typically, have we, has the commission typically nominated things for this? We haven't really done it. Don't they? I think yeah, first, church first churches I think first church did, that did that four or five years ago. I don't know if the commission yeah. nominated them, but I, I, I think they did went receive through them. here. Yeah. Yeah. The, the letter of support came through here. Yeah, because we went and got the plaque or whatever. I'm not sure we've done anything since then. Yeah, the property that might go, do these have to be national, I can't remember if these have to be national registered properties. I don't think they do. Um, I was just thinking of the, um, I don't remember the name, but I'm sorry to say the house that was moved from downtown out to Williamsburg. Mm -hmm. The owner, John Otis. I mean, yeah. John Otis wanted to do it, then he, um, uh, Noah Parsons. Because it's such an um, important piece of architecture. Mm -hmm. It's such an important history, right? And he saved that, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, but it almost went down the tubes. I mean, it was gone. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. But, I mean, the, uh, so far all we have in place is uh, the, the uh, preservation of the number light. But um, is, that, is, that, is that lot inside the business district now? Which one is that? Where the parking center was? Across the street, I don't think so. I, I don't have. So currently, it could happen again. But I think the, the issue with the house, even though we we think it's great, is that it was modified quite a bit. Okay. And yeah. had a modern, a more modern addition. I mean, and in part, it's because of modern building codes. He had to lengthen doors so you could see. You know, and again, it's a good thing that he's trying to maybe see what's old and what he's added. But he had to lengthen doors so you see a new piece of wood or paneling there. So it's it's just well, been modified so much. So I don't know if it would be eligible with that much modification, but maybe it would. They get very much tight about a relocated structure. Yeah. I don't in know fact, if a property is listed on the National Register mm -hmm. and it is 
relocated, right. it's automatically removed from the National mm -hmm. Register because the context it lost its context. Yeah. Okay, so, that's so I don't know. So I yeah. don't know about that. that probably went on. Yeah, it's definitely out of context. <laughs> well, my guess would be no, no probably no. would not. Um, I don't know what. I'm starting to think of the other things that we get yeah. awards to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of it's fairly small scale. Mm -hmm. Have we met since we had our awards? No. Because I thought that went really well. Yeah. Except, except I don't think I do it in a place like it was just it was very noisy. Um, because I, I maybe I misunderstood. I thought we're the place was going to be ours, but it right. was. They were still open. Yeah, they were open, and yeah, it just it was. Or we need to make sure we have some, a microphone if we're going to do something like that. But people there, I think, had at the time they provided some very nice refreshments. Mm -hmm. People could buy. They had to buy beer, but people could buy beer, and I think it was very congenial. And you know, some even some people were sitting in the back said, you know, we could see the pictures. That was great, and mm -hmm. couldn't always hear, but they were happy. But I mean, I would do it in a place like that again, but I still think it went well. Yeah, I actually chatted with a yeah. few people who were not part of the group. They just wandered in yeah. for a beer. <laughs> and they said, oh, this is very interesting. We yeah, really yeah. enjoyed watching that. Yeah, so, because yeah, they did put the PowerPoint on one yeah. of their screens. And, and I have a bit of notable news today. Yeah. The Far Mansion came down today. Which the what mansion? Mansion? That's right, we're five miles around the other, other end of the world in relation to Holyoke. The other side of the Tofu Curtain, the YMCA proposed to tear down a historic structure so they could build a parking lot in, oh, yeah. in, in Holyoke, Holyoke oh. which has more parking lots, more empty spots <laughs> yeah, than you can imagine. So they tore it down today without the zone change. Oh, so my gosh. firestorm of blowback. Okay. in progress. Beautiful, beautiful structure. They had a developer that was going to redevelop it and restore it, but they wanted that parking lot so the people didn't have to walk another block and get to the health Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's not what you do. A couple of few. Not the idea. <laughs> do a few less reps if you're going to walk too much. Um, and the last anyway. piece of mail is from the oh. Hampshire Council governments and they would like a support letter for House Bill 3690 which was sponsored by Representative Cocott and would authorize four million dollars for repair of the courthouse. I think that's good. Wow. Yeah, sure. Say it again, sir. Are they gonna put in windows that I'm I'm restored hopefully good I restored really good that that like open and have divided lights and things. <laughs> With four million dollars, four million dollars, they could do that maybe. That would be good. I mean, this I'd is, like to the council of governments to do their building over. Yes. This is a capital story. campaign by Hampshire County Council. Oh, well, this is to support a bond bill. A bond bill. Yes. Um, and those often don't go anywhere. So you can get it, but just they don't sell bonds to fund um, it. Yeah. Right, there's a, there's a little secret about bond bills in the legislature. Yes, you can get your bond bill passed, and the governor will sign it's it. It's never real money, though. That's right, it never gets funded because the guy in the background, the secretary of ANF, Administration and Finance, does not sign off on it. And so once the once the lights on the TV cameras go off and the newspaper reporters go away, guess what? Not that never happens. Uh, is that sub that would not be subject to uh, central business review because it's a higher governmental structure? That's a, I think it's only the state. That's a good question. That's a very good question. I don't know. Because, <laughs> well, be yeah. like yeah, because the county, you don't have any, like the state, the whole records. Yeah. yeah, like, like Mass Highway doesn't or, need to come in. Yeah. Yeah. But they, I'm not sure. If the renovation is going to be like what place. happened at Forbes, so though, mm -hmm. with all the, the mortars starting to disintegrate. Mm -hmm. That's what needs to be done. Wow. Four million dollars. Okay. Well, I think it's such a nice beautiful building now. Yeah, thank you. Just do the windows properly. Should we? Should we? I agree. Gone into in depth, and I mean, obviously, my initial reaction is that's wonderful. Sure, free, you know, free money is good money. Um, Bond but is but certain things come to mind. One is we want to make sure that what they're spending the four million dollars on 
would be historically uh, appropriate. You know, the, are they are they uh, uh, going to be putting appropriate windows in? Are they uh, you know are they doing the right thing? with or is this is to further bastardize an old building the way the, the county courthouse addition did? Have they produced, have they gotten that far in the process to you? Or is it just I don't think so. They okay. do have CPA funds, but they were looking for CPA funds from every community in Hampshire County. Of course. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Did they get any? I think Goshen gave them some money, but it was it was so small. I was like, dollars. I think it was four thousand. Wow. Or something. Yeah. Because they they based it on their uh, yearly percent. Yeah. Something like that. And wouldn't that also be a central business? Well, that's what we're well, asking. Asking. We're not oh. sure because oh, the state state, state agencies are not subject to local permit, but they're a county agency. I misunderstood your question. I'm not sure. Yeah, that, that, that would be something to. Know. I suspect that they would be, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll look it's hard to know. Well, the bond bill itself, presumably, would just be for, for the actual, you know, it would be laying out that the state is, is guaranteeing the bond and, and wants the money. But uh, at some point, I want to make sure that, that that money is spent appropriately. On yeah, but if Mass Historic is involved with approving anything, I think they would. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, just well, like they do with the Academy of Music. They, they wouldn't be, though, because it, there's only a temporary preservation restriction on the building. Yes, but it's located within the downtown that, National true, Register yeah. District and it's a contributing structure. That's true. Yeah, they may have to, they have to review it and project application. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> again, they're asking us for our support. Uh, Chair, do I take it that we're supposed to have You'd like it to vote today on that? I think so. as possible, probably. Okay. Um, I'd rather that, but our, our opinion weighs heavily on this. <laughs> well, I, 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 I think that we could vote to support the. But, but let's vote to. But in I the hopes that the uh, renovations uh, would be okay, historically. The motion, the motion is to support appropriate. The, Support someone from buying four million dollars worth of bonds, uh, guarantees of the state, <laughs> and we we support that. <laughs> oh, man. We we support that effort. It is a beautiful building. You got to admit. Yeah, and mm -hmm. they, they are a very well intentioned group, and they but they just didn't provide any detail about exactly what they're going to be doing. I would hope the windows would be first. Those are pretty bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other business not foreseen, one agenda was prepared. Well, I learned this afternoon by, by the internet that uh, when you, guys, or you finished uh, the um, uh, right of way, or the, uh, the... Oh yeah, I didn't finish you know, the right of way for the uh, uh, rail trail out to, to yes. the end of... Um, so this would actually this would actually connect the trail to Route Nine, right. so people can stop saying it's a trail. Right. So what what is the path actually now? Is it is it a dog leg kind of a thing, or is it a continuation of the it's old rail bed? Continuation of the old rail bed, primarily. Which is There's a thousand feet of the dead railroad that's now going to be able to be upgraded because we have a connection from the dead railroad down to South Main Street in Haydenville. Mm -hmm. um, if you go up there on the little section where the, where the river meanders around, and when you're on the little short stretch between the two bridges, one of the bridges was recently renovated, on that little short stretch where both the road and the railroad are together, and the river is off to the other side, on that short stretch there's a little path along the river that goes up to the dead railroad. That little path is now owned by this town of Williamsburg, where there's an easement given by the seller of this property to the town of Williamsburg. It was, that, so it was a weird situation. She had a garage. Yeah, her ex-husband built a garage 15 feet 
onto yeah. the dead railroad 25 years ago, thinking no one will ever notice. <laughs> So it was just, it was a happy trade for everyone. Well, we'll give you this property that we're never going to use, and you can give us this. Nice. So I'm actually writing a federal recreational trails grant program on behalf of Williamsburg to get some money to complete the trail all the way to the night, which would be great. So the, 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 uh, the, the old rail path itself, which was blocked by that truck with mm -hmm. that's There's still did. two. There's still two antis there on the stretch the before. The, the stretch before Route Nine. There's seven landowners. Two are uh, dead enders, and then uh, it'll. But well, we broke in the back of the opposition. There was 85 percent in favor of town meeting to accept this gift of land along the river, and uh, and they had to actually go before the state legislature because they. Uh, in order to to quiet the cloudy title with the garage over the wrong line, they had to get the legislature to agree that the town was correct in allowing this redrawing of the line to take place. Can't just be given back parkland. And so that's what happened here. The choice was either to, to demo the garage or go through this sort of Byzantine process for the last 10 months. And so I'll get the listing back. The listing will come back in a few months here. And uh, I had it under contract in two days until two days before we closed and we discovered the garage was over the line. Oh, so that was a problem. Now, will this, be, will this have a surface treatment? It will probably be stone dust. And not the stone dust that's done in Leeds because that's not done the correct way. The correct way was done in West Boylston. And I would hope the recipe the knowledge of the recipe to do that is brought forward here. What do you mean by correct way? Um, it's very loose up there and it's very kind of unstable. Mm -hmm. And um, in other areas, the closest area I can think of is in West Wilson. It's mm -hmm. done correctly. It's very firm and stable and wheelchair accessible. Oh, and yeah. and yeah. so in rural areas, that's the common way to build these things. It's not common to pave them. And so it's uh, if it's done properly, it's right. Than state. Matter of fact, if you go to the Mill River Greenway, I don't know if you've heard of this project with John Sinton. Mill River Greenway's website has an image, uh, an image of a train in Haydenville along the Mill River, taken. It's one of those bird's eye view maps mm -hmm. of the 1870s. And if you look in the very far right hand corner. Way in the bottom, you'll see a little tiny structure with a path leading down to South Main Street, mm. and that—that was—that's what we're talking that's about right here. All right, so that path has been in use since the 1870s, and, uh, and so now it's going to be formally owned by the town, which is before so it was just. You, think, you referred to it also as an easement, but now you're saying it's owned by. Well, it's. It, it's an easement. It'll still be owned by the owner of this property, number 45 South Main Street. Um, but there's an easement forever to the town of Williamsburg that will allow public passage on that trail. And that's enough to get funding to build out the rest of the trail. And actually, there's been the last three weeks, there's been several big things happening on the entire corridor all the way back into Boston. The redevelopment at North Point in Cambridge Yards is coming back to life. The uh, DCR is finally starting to design and plan the trail between Waltham, Weston, Sudbury, Wayland, Hudson, and Berlin. And um, then the Clinton Greenway Conservation Trust people, the little land trust in Clinton, is on target in the next three weeks to buy the two miles of dead railroad there and the thousand foot tunnel that's sitting there in Clinton overlooking the Wachusa residence. Uh, that's and so we're going to hold a conference in Clinton in April. And this, this news went out all over the country today. After Wayne sent that out, it got sent all over the country. Because this is the scene of the most virulent rail trail war in the Northeast United States. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh. This is 25 years in the making. Yeah, the longest yeah. gestation yeah. period for a rail trail in the United States is in Leeds and Williamsburg. 
it's a notable oddball little stuff I track. But how are uh, rail trails in thousand foot tunnels handled? Is it just how is it handled? Yeah, in other words, uh, uh, is it lighting and safety? Sometimes if they're too long, this one won't need lighting because I've been in it. And uh, there are tunnels where trains are there. And the, See, rail be a problem. the railroad is required to stop the train and have a employee go out there and warn trail users that the train is nearby. That's the guy. That sounds like a disaster. <laughs> waiting. Yeah, disaster. Waiting. There's tunnels in Wisconsin oh, where you have big snow doors and you have to open up the door and close it behind you. <laughs> And then you have a headlight and you go through and open up the door at the other end. That's spooky. Yeah. Yeah. I go around. <laughs> so there's a lot of weird stuff. Interesting. Yes. Thank you. I have some specialties. That's great. Um, okay. Uh, is there any other business report? Okay. Thank you all for your hard work and your. Wisdom, as always, it's a pleasure to serve you. Thank you.